call the meeting to order at 5.40. And first of all, reception of guests. We don't have any. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. Uh, item 1.2 is agenda, review, and revisions. Does anybody have any revisions to the agenda? I do. I'd like to add a discussion item about a special education hire, 3.7. Um, I just handed you a nom nomination form for. Okay. Um, I thought we could have that discussion, and then Wednesday the executive committee meets to do the hiring. All right. Could you just remind us very quickly that process means the local board? So, we, yes, thank you, Chris. The local board, um, I was just going to do it then, but I'll do it now. The, uh, the local board had, with the agreement that we have between the um, Supervisory Union Board and local board is that the local board will um, will be informed of the of the hiring process, be able to weigh in on it, hear about the candidate as the one candidate, and then the executive committee does the hiring because by statute, the, all special educators must be hired through the supervisory union. Okay. So thank you. Other revisions to the agenda? All right. 1.3 public comments and correspondence. Any um, board members received any comments from the public or correspondence you'd like to share at this time? I haven't. 1.4 is just noting future meetings for September. We have our regular second Monday here at Berlin Elementary at 5.30. And then on uh, September 26th, we have a carousel meeting at U32. Moving on to the consent agenda, item 2.1 is approval of the minutes of June 6th. Does anybody have, and I'll give a few minutes if you haven't had a chance to look at them yet, to uh, take a look at the minutes. Does anybody have any revisions to the minutes? I'll make a motion to approve them. Okay, it's been a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. On to the discussion agenda. <clears throat> Item 3.1 is board goals. And as you know, back in June, we talked about the board goals a bit. And there's been um, three goals set by the, uh, I want to say this right, Bill, the executive committee, adopted by the executive committee. Um, I would say it was, it was adopted by the SU board, recommended to the local boards for adoption. And recommended most, to the local boards for adoption. And most, if not all, of the, your five colleague boards have adopted them. I just I can't remember, remember yep. if I'm missing one that didn't get a vote time. And when we took these up in June, it was um, decided uh, we didn't have a full board there. We um, thought there might be some Berlin-specific modifications that we might like to make. Uh, here we are again without a full board here. I, I prefer not to talk about Berlin specific goals um, without at least Vera here and if not, you know, Eric as well. Um, but I wondered if the board would be agreeable to moving forward on adopting these three SU board goals in a show of support for those goals and the work of the SU board um, and then consider if we want Berlin specific goals to go into more detail on those at a future date. So the purpose of this being on the agenda tonight was to see if this board would be comfortable adopting the SU board goals that are in your packet. Those three goals, goal one being board governance and operations uh, to be developed by the executive committee. Goal two being board monitoring of student learning and that sits with uh, the school quality committee to spearhead that and the third being community engagement which is one that's been uh, tasked to the local boards to come up with a strategy for community engagement and identifying training needs for board members so I would put that out to the board members here tonight as to whether you'd be comfortable adopting those SU board goals with the thought that we would come back at a later date to take a look at Berlin specific and the ones that we had been working on over the years 
Um, we have our own Berlin specific goals. We wanted to do something more with those, but at least get uh, show some solidarity with the SU board on those three major goals that I think encompass a lot of what we're getting at in some of our Berlin specific goals. So I wonder what your thoughts on that might be. I agree that it's important to go ahead and and say that we're in support of the others. I, I don't recall any discussion that people were not in support of those three. It was a matter of if there's anything we felt was missing for Berlin. Right. And I'm not uncomfortable with it, other than I know that there was you, you were anxious to have a full board here uh, for that approval. That's right. Um, being the new kid on the block, I'm, I'm okay with it if you're... If, all three of us are in agreement that we would move to support these three goals, uh, recognizing that that the full board in Berlin may want to do Berlin specific goals. Words to that effect. That's a good motion right there, I think. <laughs> so um, moved. <laughs> <laughs> so the motion, as if I could try to restate it, would yes. be um, to support the three uh, supervisory union board goals support and adopt um, with the understanding that this board at a future date may wish to adopt Berlin specific goals uh, that perhaps are not encompassed by these three goals. Does that sound it, fair to it, you? It does. I think that covers it. Cool and, and our intent would be that we do that with a, with a full complement of Berlin elementary board members when we do it. I will second that. Okay. Any further discussion? Those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And those opposed? Thank you. Chris, can I make a comment? Sure. I think the 10th of September mm -hmm. might be a good time to have that discussion. Because the business part will be at the carousel. Okay. So that might be a really good time to have when you're here. To put that on? To put that on. Yep. So see if you couldn't make a note for the 10th of September. Berlin goals again. Yeah. But this will be with the intent of well to talk about it. And do you need something more specific or not? Um, the other part of that bill, I think, is the the third goal, community engagement. Um, I think each of the individual local boards are supposed to think about you know what that means. It's not really defined right. in this, and uh, what we would like to see in a community engagement policy or goal. Yeah. So maybe we could put that on for September as well. Yep. I'm trying to think if I can get you something from where you know some of your colleagues on other boards have gone to the public access training days that have been hosted oh, yeah. by VSBA. Yeah. I have some because I'm using some of it in my research. So okay. I'm just trying to think of something. The stuff I have is pretty voluminous. So yeah, so let's work on that for the next agenda to give you a little talk about that as we go okay. when we do planning. All right. Three point two is um, something that I just handed out to you. I thought maybe it was going to get into the packet, but it didn't. So I just made some copies. It's um, a school director's message that's in the current Berlin Elementary Handbook. As uh, Lori in the front office was going through some website changes, I think she was migrating some information. She started sending some things to me and asking if they were current. Um, so I was giving her some feedback on that, and then she asked about the school director's message. And I'm not sure that I can't recall ever looking at it before. Um, so it definitely needs a good look by us, I think, and an update. There's some references in here to you know when the board meetings are. Second Monday of every month at 6.15, that time has changed. The carousel meetings, that time has changed. So we definitely need to make some, some updates to this. I gave her some feedback already, so she may have tweaked a few things. I could have to look online, but this was the language we were working from. So I would ask that uh, the board take a look at this and provide any feedback to me between now and the next meeting. Um, and if it's something simple, like changing the meeting time, um, I can get ask Lori to um, update that right away. But. I think taking a deeper look at the overall message, is that the message we want to be conveying as a board? Is there something 
else we want to try to get across as a board, this is a, a, a pretty good opportunity for us to get out in front of uh, new parents to Berlin or anyone who just has to happens to stumble across our website or you know once a year hopefully parents are taking a look at this uh, at this handbook so it's a pretty important message um, and I'd ask that everybody take a look at it between now and the next meeting uh, and feel free to send edits to me and I can compile those and bring them back for for a change um, at our next meeting I think something needs to change in the first paragraph just so people don't start reading it saying, oh, I've read this before. Yeah. You know, whether it's just saying for that something. Reason alone. Yeah, yeah. Whether it's saying something about Aaron or, or something just to show that it's an updated message. Okay. So feel free to send your edits to me. I'll work on it over the next month, and we'll have something to look at um, for next month to, to approve and see if we can't get out. Any other comments, or we want to move to the next item? All right. Chris, can I just interject one thing? Sure, Aaron. Um, an extension of that in the handbook that I was looking at was the uh, look like value statements um, and as I was it's not in the copy that you gave us but um, after in, in, in the previous handbook or last year's handbook after the school board letter um, there were some value statements so there's more to it <laughs> and I I thought to myself as I was getting to know Berlin as I was looking at the handbook and trying to kind of compile um, these sorts of things. I wasn't sure if it was a, uh, if, if the value statements were something that the school had come up with together or if it were you know, school board values. Um, I think that was another part of the, the question that I had had originally, just getting I think, to know. Yeah. The, that page isn't labeled well to say who who it is, if I recall what you're right. talking about. It, Which I, so you I, don't know I, because I it doesn't it say. Was, you know, something that maybe would have been done collaboratively and um, Lori mentioned, well, I think it's what the school board had come up with for for, for statements. Um, so I don't know if in a future meeting we can talk about it more. So the, I had forgotten about that, that Lori copied and pasted, I think, into the email because the page she was referring to me to didn't exist at the time because she was working on the website. I couldn't get to it. So she copied and pasted this into an email to me, which I copied and pasted into a Word document to print, to print tonight. But the bad, okay, so there are, talking about. There are seven and that was my question. Who's this? values after that. And they're all great. <laughs> I just wasn't sure as, as I was. And I can't recall for the past six years, Chris, us ever having that discussion at a board meeting here in Berlin. No, I don't think Doesn't so. Doesn't mean that they didn't come from a board. I just I can't recall yeah. it in the past six years. So, so even I, that type of age means they're if they're that old that we should be relocating. Okay. So let me But they could have come from the staff. Yep. Oh, yeah. Right. That's the other thing is So you'll want to do some investigating Aaron with the staff. They may have come from the staff. Okay. So I, we can I would assume, since they're not tight, I remember you telling me earlier today, there, there's a yeah. title by who who put these forth. I think it went along with the family school compact. Which it could, it could have, which we need to do for title one. Yeah. And, that's, that's that, and that could have been done that way. My thought of yeah. what it okay. was. So. so let's have that in front of us next meeting as well. Okay. It's a good one with the goals discussion. Yes. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 3.3 is the WCSU testimony for the State Board of Education meeting, which is Wednesday. Yes. 10.30 or 10 o'clock, one of those two times. I can't remember which. Yeah. And um, we've been asked to adopt that testimony so that they could say, as they were testifying in front of the Secretary of our State Board of Education, that uh, all of the boards had adopted the message and the sentiment behind it. Um, we thought we were going to have a quorum when we got together for the board retreat, and uh, there was only two of us, so we weren't able to adopt it then. 
the deadline for them to send that out was yesterday, I think. Uh, so they've sent the message already, slightly modified the statement to say that it was unanimously adopted. Um, but I thought it was still would still be a good exercise and a good message, uh, even if it's after the fact, that we take a look at that statement and if we can support it, that we do support it as a board. And that should be in your packet. And they did a great job in uh, creative uh, formatting with small margins <laughs> to, to get it all onto one page. And I think uh, maybe it was Matt, maybe it was someone else who said uh, the kind of the bottom line was you got it right there that we weren't willing to do this to each other. <laughs> that was kind of an interesting statement. Um, hopefully you've had a chance, Peter. Maybe you haven't had a chance to right. to look at it. So Bill, is there any more background you want to? give to that? No, I mean, I know that Floor and Scott and uh, Matt have been the main authors of this. I think there's been one or two other people giving a little bit of feedback, but they really have been the three uh, authoring this and there. I know they met today to prep for Wednesday to testify and we're going to be asking you. And Matt's in the place. I talked to Matt today. You know, I talked quite a bit, but um, he's in the place where he's willing to say, you know, we're just going to get a quorum. We had everybody else, but we on Monday night, Berlin ratified it to be in agreement. And I think the sentiment that I hear that uh, that really strikes a chord with me is that, hey, we've all agreed on this. We, there's some things we don't agree on, but we've, you know, we're we're trying to keep our unity of voice together, and so we're they're doing that. I think everyone's and I think everyone's really bought into that. I would say. I absolutely stand behind what this says, and I only hope people will be listening and responding to show us they really do hear us. The, in fact, the only thing when I first read this that I even thought about was somewhere in here there is a sentence that says, um, some Berlin, I think it says Berlin folks, might just say folks in general, um, are supportive of consolidation. And although you can say that as a blanket statement, I think of those people who are supportive of it, I feel a good number of them are supportive because they have been led to believe that it saves money. And I don't believe that is true. At least we didn't find offhand how you would be saving money going out the door with us. That's that's the only thing that I kind of read the sentence twice that it said going well, it doesn't really paint the whole picture, but I totally am in support of what it does say. The other piece of this was to appoint the representatives to present that testimony, and that's for Scott and Matt. And you know, personally, I don't have any. They've, they've done a great job for us so far. Very comfortable with them presenting this to the state board. I don't think there's anybody that could do it any better than them. Right. I mean, we'd have to find somebody if they weren't available and willing. But yeah. all right. Well, I see. I skipped ahead on the action agenda and we already approved the board goals. Um, so I guess I'll wait till we get to 5.2 and 5.3. Peter, you had any comment on the testimony for the State Board of Ed? No, I, am I supposed to have that in this packet? I'm not finding that it. Is, it's on page six and it's all on one page. So it's on, a back, on the back side. It starts with yep, the secretary absolutely. misunderstood. Okay, you got it. Call me when you get to five two. Sure. <laughs> so this was the response to um, the secretary's recommendation of merger for WCSU. All right. Three point four is the SU board retreat follow up, and we don't have any 
specific action items on for tonight, but um, I'll just I'll report back and, and Bill and Aaron, you give your observations as well. Um, but we heard from Nate Levinson, um, who did a really great job of, of presenting it. I was fortunate it was the second time that I heard him present because he was at the um, annual board chair training down in, in Fairley at Lake Maury as well. Um, and he talked about best practices for supporting struggling students um, and you know, the trends in Vermont and the years of study that he and some of his colleagues have done around how effective um, Vermont has been on that and a lot of other school districts as well, but he's just spent a lot of time in Vermont studying this. Um, and it really pulled a lot of pieces together for me. Uh, Vera was also able to make it that day. Um, I think she got a lot out of it as well. Um, I thought it would be helpful for us to take a look at, you know, after, after hearing about that and um, his recommendations, it might be helpful for us to hear again from the administration on what, you know, kind of the, the direction uh, that I think Bill has been taking us without say for speaking for myself without me fully understanding why we were going in some of those directions not having a full knowledge um, behind it about the reduction in uses of paraprofessionals um, and his recommendation which is to get more quality instruction with high highly qualified teachers as opposed to substitute instruction with paraprofessionals and special educators who might not be um, necessarily subject matter experts in the area that they're teaching for that that extra help and that extra learning i'm, I'm probably not doing this justice bill you're doing fine you're doing right. great it comes better, it's better when it comes out of someone else's mouth <laughs> i'm trying it's why at least i try to convince it. people for five or six <laughs> years now so when nate came along and, and you, you know, matt said to me he goes i get it now and i'm like just as long as you get it that's <laughs> you all i care <laughs> as long as you get it so kind of lessons learned were we need to take a, take a look at how we are supporting those struggling students um, and ensure that it's not uh, pulling them out of the classroom for instead of instruction as opposed to extra instruction. Right. Um, so I thought it would be good for us to, to take a step back and take a look at it. I think we're doing a pretty good job already, and you've started moving us We're, we're okay, but there's a lot of steps we could take here at Berlin. But it was, it was really interesting to me to see how that kind of fluke of history, which was to say, why not do one-on-ones? One-on-one is better, right? Let's put a student with a one-on-one a -on -one with a, a, a special educator um, or a paraprofessional. Um, and Vermont started down that path a long time ago and we've kept down that path. And so we have our um, student to staff ratio is, is one of the highest in the country, perhaps mostly because of that. Um, and now the trend is maybe trending in the other direction, at least they're recommending. Well, there are more and more school districts that are moving that way. The, the problem, we have a structural issue that we're gonna have to face. And how our schools with the size they are, we're gonna have to start really looking at um, how we do this across schools. And Nate was saying that. And you know, how do you get special educators that are, that are specialized in math? Because they're generalists. And you're putting a student that's in, who's already had a tough time or has not learned, and pick whatever content, I said math, but it could be literacy. And we're not putting with someone that's a highly qualified, uh, the most skilled literacy or the most skilled math person to learn. So we have, content specialists here who've been doing interventions. So we've been doing that with our tier two kids, but not necessarily our tier three kids, which are these kids that are identified and have an IEP. So Nate's saying like, so why are you doing that? If you have paraprofessionals giving that instruction or a general special educator that's a generalist and they've got to do all this other stuff, and you pull them out of math with someone who's been trained on how to teach math for grade three to someone that's a generalist that the other person might have been generalist, but hadn't done necessarily all that professional development to do math. That that instruction instead of is not even is not the quality of the classroom, where they really need someone that's an expert, not a classroom teacher who's teaching four subjects. 
in that field to really to gain more than a year's growth for someone that's had difficulty in that. And it has been done. And so what are some of the recommendations that you said you have? Well, some of them we've been doing, but it, it's using, it's taking your best teachers and turning them into coaches and interventionists, which we've been doing with Hillary mm -hmm. and Amber and Kim. Um, it's reducing the number of paraeducators, um, rescheduling the school. We haven't done that here. We need to do that here at Berlin. What do you mean rescheduling? So that every kid that's on that's on an IP gets their hour and a half of literacy in their classroom, mm -hmm. and they get their interventions at another time during the day. It's not we take of oh, that 90 minutes, we take 60 minutes, and they're in the classroom with the teacher, and 30 minutes are with a special educator. And is there something preventing that rescheduling from happening? Yep. Staffing and assignments. So we have to look at how we're using people around the building, how we're using the resources. And, um, and you know, we have to look at our allocations of specials and all that. We've got, we've got three buildings now that have done that full blown mm -hmm. in the elementary level. Berlin is about halfway there. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So we have to really look at that. Um, and it's been getting better. I mean, it's not like it has been stuck this way. It's just you have to look at the resources and when we get down to budget time, how do we use the resources that we have? And Nate was pretty clear about it. it's not about more resources, it's about reallocating and priorities. Are we willing to prioritize cert certain instructional areas and that if you can reprioritize and lower your number of students that have interventions, you can actually provide more opportunities for all because you can tie up so much of your budget in the one-to-one -one paraeducator resources. But you don't get there overnight. You have to be willing to to work the system and get the student results to that point. Is there a behavioral component in that at all? Yeah, exactly. Yes, the exact same model for behavior. But but I mean, are hmm, being able to access behavioral people is that something that limits being able to reschedule? No. No. No, we, I think that, that's the place where Berlin's made the huge jump. You put the resources in, so we, had a, we didn't have just a behavior support person or a BI. We had an analyst in here. We had to contract out for it. Yep. That came in and gave professional development to the teachers on how to work as a team and, and working on the behavioral issues. We've seen the data that they've gone down. Do we have a, we've had a couple high flyers. We've all recognized that. But the majority of the, uh, that's really turned around with this exact same model that Nate was showing us. Mm -hmm. Now we need to do it. There's a lot of interesting talk about the four, um, I heard someone mention it as the four R's, so reading, writing, arithmetic, and readiness, like this fourth aspect that we're asking staff here to take care of, um, and how that intervention for you know, being able to learn, being able to be in the classroom um, is just such a critical component of the learning. Did you have a question on the board orders? Did I miss this? Did we not get I don't think we got them by email this time. No, you did not. Okay. I was no. say, I don't Lori's know been out for the past three and a half weeks, so we got those done real quick. They will come next time. Bye. So, Bill, do you think there's any follow-up we should do? Well, I, I just wrote myself a note to make sure for Peter and Eric and Corinne that they got all the handouts. The handouts, yep. Yeah. That, that that we have all those electronic. Okay. Because you and, because Pierre has them and you have them. So yep. people could look at that a little bit. I think one of the things we should think about, and you know, and, and we got to a point as a full SU board there to say, task the administration with where do you want to go and what is the plan to get us there from the model we've seen. So we haven't even had a chance as a leadership team to sit down and discuss that since it's been almost been about a week and a half. Yeah. Uh, we won't have a chance till September, but we need to do that and come back and say, this is where we would suggest we go, and here's an action plan to get us there. Luckily, our implementation plan is very much in alignment with this work. So it's not like we're doing two different pieces of it. So I think we need to get a little better at communicating that with all the boards where we're at. Also, and it's both, it's not either or, it's a both individually for the schools and collectively for the SU. So when Aaron and I are here talking with you about Berlin, 
here's where Berlin is, but here's where everybody else is, and how do we fit into that greater puzzle? Yeah. Does that make some sense? Yeah. Is there anything you wanted to add, Aaron, for any of your takeaways from that day? Yeah, it was a fantastic day. It was great to see board members and administrators coming together to uh, talk about learning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, <clears throat> You know, definitely where I'm at, being new, is having the new set of eyes to come in and see what's happening in, in classrooms. Um, and what really struck me, well, I wouldn't say struck me, but uh, helped confirm is the importance of Tier 1. You know, we, we have been focused as a as public schools, as, as, as a uh, education in our country to focus on the higher tiers um, intervention, special education, um, and uh, we don't want to miss the, the the big picture of what's happening in, in every classroom. Making sure that we have the right people, the right teachers, um, or that they have the, the the skills and the tools to deliver best instruction. So. That was powerful for me for that day, and uh, you know, as we, as I start to see how things operate around here. I mean, I have a sense to some degree, but to see things in action, um, and then to really look hard at the scheduling component is something that is a goal of mine. Come through the book through scheduling. <laughs> and, Very uh, few people do that. So. <laughs> to really look at you know, how we do maximizing everything. So, as we talk further about priorities, like Bill said, um, I'll be I'll be anxious to see. Okay, how can we how can we really look at the scheduling piece mm -hmm. uh, better? So, yeah. Okay. All right. On to three point five. School safety. Um, is that? I think that was left over from. No, that, that's what I was wondering, Chris. And you and I didn't have a chance since I was at Southern New Hampshire University last week, and we were doing things by email. Do you remember and I, what school I, safety might have been? There? So I, I just left it on so we could do exactly what we're doing now. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that on there? Um, I really don't know. However, <laughs> I do have one question since that's on there. Sure. And I can't lay my maybe I can't lay my fingers on it. Um the card that would tell me. There is a oh, see it. There is The policies E7 and E7A that are about crisis prevention and response policy and emergency evacuation. Mm -hmm. And one of them, I think it's the second one, E7A, says that a copy of this policy and procedures will be filed at the Berlin Town Clerk, Police Department, Fire Department, and Vermont National Guard. Can't speak for all four of them, but it's not on file at the Town Clerk's office. Okay. I'll see. School safety related. Fair. Unless the policy has been updated that. I haven't seen one that's yeah. updated one of that. That's E7 and E7A in our... I don't know for sure if it's in here. Oh. I haven't looked at this one yet. That's Where's the one that you're looking at? Where did you get that? It's stuff online. Stuff online. Okay. I know we do the police department in a way, and one of the things the police department tells us to do is keep them pretty quiet, so... Mm -hmm. Um, I don't see a problem with them being at the town, town offices. Um, yep. That's news to me. Okay. But it doesn't mean it isn't. I just it's news to me. I didn't know that. I guess I'm so maybe maybe stuff has been updated, but somehow yeah. either that's out of date or yeah something. So maybe Bill, if you could have somebody take a look at that one. See if it needs to be on the file somewhere where it's not. As far as school safety in general, I know we've been doing a lot of drills, <laughs> at least we did last year. Um, I assume that'll that'll continue. That's mm -hmm. all part of the plan. Yep, we're required to do monthly drills. It's even more important to get all the new staff. 
up to date on that's all right. those. Oh, we have we have annual yeah. trainings. We <laughs> how much did we spend in our retreat talking about oh, that? Yeah. We always go over that stuff at the beginning of the year with Great. with faculty and staff. Okay. Even though they, some of them have been here for a long time, we still go over it all. So. And then I ask how the new facility is working in that regard. Is it or uh, parents and teachers happy with the upgraded? So I can tell you my experience, and Chris and Corinne Cur and chime in. Uh, I think it is so much easier than the way it used to be to come in and be. It's nice to be gr greeted by someone right at the door instead mm -hmm. of a camera, to be buzzed through, and be able. You know, the, you can let the, the person comes right into the vestibule, but they're not in the building. And the biggest thing for me is the student flow. That there's no restriction for the student flow from this whole area to the gymnasium in the front. So that's just so much smoother, and those doors stay open unless we need them shut for something. You know, the, the, the second set of doors as you come in, Peter, there. Mm -hmm. So we left those there in case we wanted them, especially for nights of the gyms being used, so we can lock off the rest of the building and people use the gym. But it's just really made it, the, the, I watch the flow in the morning, and it just, you know, and especially like after the, we sh they put the security system in place and kids are still moving about. It seems to work so much better, in my opinion. Yeah, that's a big upgrade. So, so the consensus within the building is that it's safer. I think so. Uh, I haven't heard any. Let me put it this way: I haven't heard anyone say it's not. <laughs> let me say that, Peter. The other thing was that were all the doors that were propped open, uh, with, um, <laughs> door stops. Yeah. Now we've got the magnetic release on the back, so they can off oh, in the entry area. For no, the all. all all like, like those doors. doors you see right there, mm -hmm. if you push one button, everything locks and in the whole building. Mm -hmm. close, so the lockdown is very quick. It's always an issue. It, it's a big issue. It can be yeah. easy to problem. Yeah. Because people get frustrated because they're like, this isn't helping me during the day. Yeah. It's human nature. Yeah. It's not well, anyone yeah. being bad. Well, and I think, I think air flow and quality is better than it was because that was one of the reasons doors were getting propped open because right. if you're stifling hot, you need to have air mm -hmm. movement. And I think that's been improved. Yep. Which is so. it's helpful. Thank you. Well, I think we did a good job covering school safety. Even though <laughs> <no one's doing. laughs> I'll, I'll look at that some more, Corinne. I was just looking at this talking. version. but. <laughs> 3.6 is website maintenance funds availability. And I think, Karen, this was on in response to, I think you had made a comment about perhaps having some funds available to um, hire someone to work on the website. Yeah, I mean, website stuff had come up, has come up several times, not just last year, but it continues to come up because we really treat it like it's the focal communication venue for people as far as you know everybody's always saying well it's on the website it's on the website but yet it isn't necessarily updated on the website and i was actually pretty surprised last year i didn't realize that when when information was switched to a server was that two years ago maybe yep. that we didn't necessarily have the same it support that it was it was falling on already busy hands to take care of it so that's been in, so let me just tell you a little bit what has been here for six years and some of the change so since i've come since i've been here we've always had one or two people in the building that were taking care of the website so it people or other people other people there's never been an it person since my time of being here i'm not saying it wasn't before that it hasn't been someone in the building that that was added on to their job responsibilities um, so we have two people that do that in this building, uh, Amy Young and Lori dutton Renaud. They kind of split it um, in the work, and so that's part of, and that's why we have it across the SU. Um, the IT folks don't have the time to maintain the websites; they're just doing what they can to keep our infrastructure structure up and running, and keep everything, all the devices running around here. Um, so. Uh, when before when we had the Joomla one server that's the way it was working when it was one server in house we were getting hacked we couldn't keep the we couldn't keep we couldn't keep up with the firewall updates and the updates to the server that needed to be, prevent it from being hacked so we outsourced it two years ago to a company called School Wires and we designed um, a collaborative website for all the elementary schools 
somewhere in this next year, and I don't know when because I haven't had the chance to talk to the principals about when we're going to roll over. So it's not a collaborative website, but they're actually individual sites for each school, which will help with those templates. A little thing like the address will be the school address at the bottom of every page for Berlin Elementary School. Um, it was just some of the, it was a cost versus ease of use and training that we needed for people to keep it up and resources we were to allocate that we had to allocate for the website. We've been able to re redo some of that. And, uh, okay. So has that just recently happened? Is that we're, not, we're not about to do it. We're not, we don't have time. We haven't had capacity to do it this summer. What I've got to do is talk with the principals about timeline and personnel time to be able to, we can have one person flip it over, flip one website to another. That's not hard. Yeah. But it's that person that takes it over to do that work. It's the time they have to, okay, now it's adjusted. We got to go back and train you. And when is a good time to do that during the school year? Um, there wasn't any time this summer to do that with all the resources we had across the SU. They were already allocated. Yeah. We allocate our summer resources about six months prior. So, still not really understanding if that at all addresses what I'm saying. In that there are many ways that the school website is not current, and I'm not clear if that is going to change anytime soon. And I feel like it's certainly up to the board to address it in some way if necessary as far as if additional money or personnel or something is needed that we can help make happen, mm -hmm. then I'd like that to happen because it is okay. so visible not only to our current school community and greater community, but people who are potentially going to be coming here they check out things like what school websites, town websites. I've had many conversations with people, and I just don't want to see that be something that prevents people getting information timely or wanting to be part of our community. So here's what I would say. I think you should continue to, tonight I have the financial for the final for last fiscal year. We've hired new personnel. We haven't sewn up all their cost of their benefits and salaries. You'll get that in your September meeting. You should look at that. Look, take a look at, I'm trying to, you know, where Corinne was going. Do you want to spend fund balance money or appropriate money or tell, tell Aaron and I to go find money within the budget to do that? Because to have, I, I would never turn down someone to do more of that communication piece we've done with what we've had. So I think I really thank you for that. Corinne, because that to ask the question, and I would put it right back on the board. You know, you, you were talking about goals earlier and priorities. So, if this is one of our goals, which communication is, okay, are you willing to do because you can't do everything? And you said it, Corinne, this is on top of what other people are already doing for their jobs. So, I think to have that discussion with the financial look at what we look at for what we know because we're this happens every summer we don't get you until september when we sewn up all the benefits and the cost new salaries to give you a full total cost of what the this year's personnel is because you all remember that that adjusts each year because you have some people who leave and some that come back and replace those positions so i'm not trying to stall i just i think you should have all the information before you make a decision on that well, I guess another way to ask it is, do you think additional personnel, given that there have been a lot of changes, would be something that we should be discussing in order to have that be our best foot forward? I'm so I, I get it that everybody's busy. I yeah. truly get that. So I guess I didn't really follow your question, Corinne. Do you mean by what, what the new personnel are costing or because we have new personnel? Both. I mean, right, you so know, right now, you know right the now, bigger picture. Right. So right now, I don't know what they all cost because we're right now, literally in August, inputting like, hey, Aaron just elected to go with a whatever plan for his health, let's say a single plan. And we had, we had protracted a family plan, so we had some savings. Or we protracted a single because that's where Carol was, and this is all fictitious. Um, and now he wants a family. So there's a, there's a deficit in what we had. There's a budget deficit. Yeah. And we always have some of that play in personnel, but I haven't done, uh, I shouldn't say I, let's give the credit where the credit's due. 
Lori and her team haven't done the summation of all the personnel costs mm -hmm. to say, we know what everyone's salary is, we know that today, but people have till September 1st to elect benefits. And so once I have that, I can tell you the financial. Now, to answer your other half of your, your question about with everything we're trying to do around here, can we use more hands? The answer is yes, always. It's just how we do that in a systematic way with what we're doing within the school. I just want to pause and think about that. So well, does that, I'm trying to be as direct as I can to the question. I certainly don't mind pausing and thinking about it, but it sounds like if it's something that is is need, if more hands are needed to make it work better, that if we want to move forward with it, it's the wise thing to do, whether there is money still available from all the moving around of folks, or whether it's from fund balance. I mean, because it's, it's two are you, questions. Are you saying, do we need it? And if we, we have consensus that we do, Maybe Aaron can look at this before the, between now and the next meeting. And if we do, then we have to figure out how much it costs and if, where we yeah. might find those funds. I mean, right now we're talking, it's kind of a nebulous situation. You might be talking about an employee, might be talking about a consultant. We don't know. But if, if, if we don't need it, it's a moot point. But if we do need it, we should know that first, and then we can go from there. Um, Thank you, Peter. That's exactly what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think, I think it's, I'll we, stop there. We need, to, we need to define what we want out of the website. Um, what are our goals with the website? And can it be accomplished with people we have in-house? Or is it something that we might want to spend a little money on to make it happen? It fits in nicely, I think, with um, our communication goal and community engagement goal. Like Corinne said, it's pretty important. It's our, yep. our, uh, our putting our best foot forward for people who are maybe visiting us from, from far away for the first time, you know, checking us out online. Uh, a lot of parents would love to, to know, I think, that, and not just parents, all community members would like to know um, that there's up-to-date information. And once you start making it up-to-date and accurate information, I think more and more people will use it. Um, right now, it's, I think part of the communications issues that we're having is kind of a crapshoot when you go on there as to whether you're going to get current information or not. Um, and it's and I don't want to point fingers at, at anyone. It's it's difficult to to be uh, someone who manages content and who's not necessarily an IT person. And it might depend on the system that you're using and whether you've been trained on it. And so there are a lot of reasons why it's difficult to maintain. Yeah. Um, so let's just take a look at it and see. I mean, one of the things that I still I mean, it's been years since I was a webmaster. But one of the things I remember in my training that was the person who owns the the information should be the one putting it on the web. Yeah because they know what it is. Yep. And when you have someone that's away from it, that sits away from it, it's like you don't know whether it's right or not, you just yeah. happen to post it because it needs to be posted. Right. So that's yeah. one of the difficulties in schools because most of the, the information is so distributed. You have to build, it's much more complicated than a, than a business or even, a, yeah. it, it's, it's who, who's the owner of the information. You have to look at that. And luckily, these, these um, content management systems are getting better and better. You don't have to know HTML. Right, right, right. It's, and, and that's, and that's, what, we'll put it and that's what we're on. We're on something like Good. that. It's, not, it's a total graphical interface in it. So um, we can take a look at that. And okay. I'll be doing the budget, the budget stuff with Lori. So we try to. All right. Right now, and, and this is something I should have said tonight, with Aaron starting, although he's been a principal for 11 years, and I have a lot of respect for what he needs to do, Aaron needs to have time to really get to know the community. So there's some functions that you'll see me do that normally you would, might even say, Carol, it's more of the operation stuff, the building stuff, the budget stuff, um, to really say, and not that Aaron does, he calls the shots on what he needs in his building. Don't, I'm not trying to say I'm doing that, but just so he can focus on, like the, these first 90 to 180 days are really crucial for him to get to know the community. And can he spend time doing that? Good. So we'll keep that on as a part of the board communication school for next month. Let's mm -hmm. keep some tabs on that and maybe make some plans for what we can do for the website. Um, reports to the board. Bill? I want to do one more, 3.7. Oh, sorry about if that. If we can do that, yes. the SPED hire. The special education hire, we added 3.7. Yeah, and I'm going to let Aaron talk a lot to this because he was part of the hiring process. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's Amy Asels. Asels, Asels. Um, here, it wasn't in the packet, so. Um, 
And as you heard me say, I was away at my doctoral classes last week. And as you know, we've been trying to hire for a 1.0 special educator to, we had an increase in needs in special education in Berlin and Jane Caswell uh, resigned from her 0 0.5, 0 0.6 position here. And we had 0.5, we had put a 1.0 in the budget. So um, we've been trying to hire and we had someone that we had successfully back in April, but then right before they signed their contract, they pulled out of the position. So we've been trying to, and it's been tough. But Aaron, maybe you could talk a little bit to Amy sure. and some of her qualifications. Yeah, so um, we had this posted and Amy applied and after looking at her uh, application, we felt she definitely needed to come in for an interview. Um, she's a wonderful person. Uh, she has a tremendous amount of experience and I think that's one thing that really, um, that I really enjoyed when I got to know her is not only has she um, been involved in or has worked at different kinds of schools and with different populations of students, but she has uh, sought new experiences for her own learning. Um, so not only is she an experienced person, but she's a she's a lifelong learner. Um, as she as she uh, um, moved around different parts of the of the of the country and the and the state. Um, she she has had experiences um, that have um, definitely allowed her to build uh, a toolkit that I think will benefit the kids here at Berlin. Um, <clears throat> she has a lot of energy. Um, she came across as very collaborative. Um, lots of ideas. Um, engage, engagement with kids is a high priority for her, obviously, but she really likes to connect with kids um, as we would expect any teacher to, but um, just her personality is such that uh, she seems very, um, it seems to come easy to her, uh, has a great sense of humor. Um, <clears throat> we had really good reference checks as well, and uh, look forward to her um, being here at Berlin. She'll be working with a third and fourth grade team of students. And uh, it, was a, it, was a, it was a great interview. Good to meet her and um, look forward to working with her. Okay. Any questions for Aaron? Yeah. I entertain a motion. I, I don't really need one from you. Oh. I just want to know where you're at, sure. as all of you. Um, you can take a motion if you'd like to oh. recommend her. Um, and I'll be interviewing her tomorrow. I have one reference call that I generally do um, that I have not completed. I've sent an email about it today, but we haven't had a chance to contact. Okay. But I think this is a 95%, 99% chance of getting all the way to the executive committee on Wednesday. Excellent. It was a very impressive resume. Yes, indeed. So I wanted to let you all know about that. Thank you. No more reports to the board. Go ahead, Aaron, start. Sure. I just wanted to first start by saying that I'm excited to have officially <laughs> started this summer. And uh, my report is included in the packet. If you have any questions for me, I'd be happy to, to answer them. Um, but you know, I just wanted to say that uh, as I've as I've started, you know, we've we've had summer program here, so I've you know talked to a lot of folks. Um, it hasn't been completely quiet just because we've had summer program here, but uh, the folks that I have talked to, um, from you know custodial staff here to administrative assistant Lori in the office, um, other administrators in the supervisor union and the central office have all been supportive um, and have have all have had positive things to say about Berlin, and I know they're not saying that just to <laughs> make me feel good, um, but genuinely have great things to say. So um, I am looking forward to being part of the community, and um, um, if you have any questions about my report or anything else, I'd be happy to answer. Can you give us another update regarding the roof and any other construction type of stuff that it's still? Yeah, the roof's wrapping up, the membrane was done weeks ago and if you notice the trim is in progress um, as you leave you'll see the the gym side 
is all trimmed. It looks really nice. Um, and they'll be wrapping the rest of that up within, before school starts for sure, before kids arrive. Um, we've had some tiles that have been, uh, that have popped up in some of the rooms. Um, I think this was something that was already known at the beginning of the summer before I started. Um, so you mean the from floor the tile. floor tile, sorry. The, uh, from the rooms that were recently done. Yes, yeah. So um, folks have been in to address that. <laughs> uh, we've had some work done today, some more tomorrow. Um, we'll be ready for the start of school, but it's definitely a little last minute, but um, we're, we're on top of it. No asbestos when they pop up, though. That's the uh, no. no, that's <laughs> the nice thing. There's that's no more nice asbestos. No, that's for sure. Yeah. That's warranty work, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is it. Um, the other thing we're trying to look at. Um, there's a couple uh, things that didn't get addressed in construction. One that Chris, you know about, that was talked about was the service line for the water that comes in. Yeah. So we're getting an estimate on what it'll cost to bring that up to a two and a half inch line. To come in from it's literally like eight feet outside the building there's an eight inch line from what was brought in from the construction of the water project so we're looking to see if we can do that pretty easily and we have a drain that was causing problems we found in the roof that's over in the boiler room so we're having a drain uh, a roof drain pipe has a crack in it that we're going to replace yeah. i don't think those will be huge pieces um they'll be capital fund pieces but uh, I have asked Chuck to work with TMI, who was our plumber, in here for the construction, just to say how much would it cost to do all these. And Roy Swain, who's been our engineer, has been doing some design to make sure it's all correctly Great. done. Great. But I, don't, I mean, if that's more than ten thousand dollars, I'll be shocked. Yeah. Um, and there's some digging we need to do for that drain, and it's right next to where the water comes in. So we said we might as well dig it all just up at it. once and do it right outside sure. the kitchen there. Um, and the, Chuck's done a bunch of painting in three or four rooms. Catching up this summer and um, trying to tackle the rooms that are in the worst that of uh, the walls that didn't that were in the worst shape. Good. Uh, you'll notice the conference room that was probably the hardest one to go the after. Conference room that looks great. So Chuck's been Chuck and Jeff have been and Alicia have been doing some great. Yes. Work. Yep. Kudos to them for their hard work this summer. Absolutely. This you know this the grounds were kind of a mess about a year ago with all the trailers and construction that we had coming in and out of here, and it really looks nice outside. So. Oh, you mentioned in your report, too, about the playground, right? Yes. That yeah. was my the, question. Uh, What's the next step as far as determining what there will be for a structure? Mm -hmm. To say nothing about funding, but... Right. So I, I, I can't speak to any plans that have been talked about. I mean, Chuck and I have kind of mentioned, yeah, we're going to... We should probably... <laughs> I thought... Uh, I thought Maybe it was just Chuck and I had the conversation, but I thought it was the three of us that about in the past like three or four weeks had talked about I was going to go to John Hemelgarn at Black River Design and at least oh, get okay. the folks that, yeah. that do the playground. We just did a playground at Romney with, through Black River Design. But, and Amy, you should talk to Amy because she did a nice job of getting the kids involved and them electing okay. and having this big vote and the kids really got into it about what they wanted. And, <laughs> and it was awesome. Great. It was awesome. They had three or four designs. The kids did the whole thing, did everything. It was so interactive. Nice. Well, it was sometime in just the last few years. What was it? Fifth and sixth graders that they did rallied it. behind yeah. having a new piece of equipment yeah. up there mm -hmm. yeah. and did fundraising. So. Yeah. But I think that that's something we we can then talk about with the board with the capital project. You know, how much we had a capital fund, how much fundraising, what's the role of the PTNA. You know, yeah. all that good conversation. Great. Yeah. But the old one was getting to be a safety hazard, the insurers were our, saying. Our, insurers, our insurance agent said. Yeah. Yeah. And they every year come in and inspect our playground. It is. Around. It was. So it was used to begin with. <laughs> I forget what year, but and now Burger King is new down there. So. <laughs> 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 yeah, nice. Well, great. Um, I just hand you the director's report. I know yep. it's kind of last minute. A lot of it's about the great work that's gone on in this building around summer program. Um, just really good work here with students. I would, what I was going to write about for my report, which is still, let's just say, theoretical, um, and we'll get written and I'll send you a copy of it when it gets done this week, 
is the um, good work of professional development that's happened. We've had teachers in the World Peace Game, which was an amazing experience. Jen talk, the directors talk about that on the second pair. Of, it's going to be an amazing part of our seventh grade curriculum where the kids really work in a world simulation for world peace. Um, I know that there were actually a couple books. Carl's son was part of that. So it was great to see. And was your son part of that no. too? No. I thought he was. Okay. Um, because it, it can go anywhere from fifth grade to eighth grade. It's a great middle school scenario where they, it's like playing 3D chess, but on steroids. It's amazing the amount of stuff they, they accomplish. Um, and then we had teachers doing math lab, uh, PD, uh, Aaron was part of that. Uh, we've had teachers in a responsive classroom, and we've had teachers doing project-based learning up at U32, which we're really doing as a seventh through 10th grade initiative for students, the majority of their learning is coming through a project-based approach and integrated across uh, content areas. So I'll, I'll get you a copy of when I finish that report this week and send you one in email. Great. Thank you. Uh, finance report? So as I alluded to briefly before, I handed out a finance report to you. This is the final that's going to, the auditors are in this week. So this is the end of the 1718 as best as we see it. It may have a little bit of adjustment here and there because of the auditors, but knowing Lori and the good work that she does, we're probably within you know, a couple thousand dollars here or there out of the $3.5 million budget. Um, so we ended the year on a good point. Um, a lot of our, um, you reserved pieces for the health insurance last year for the extra costs on that for some of the recapture that we had come through the state legislature and then you reserve some technology equipment down there on the bottom. Um, you know, our, our biggest savings, I think one of our biggest, and you had asked about this before, Corinne, was utilities. And you'll see we're at 33,600 uh, there in June. That's the whole year put together. So we have some good savings and there'll be some good adjustments into the budget process for this coming year. And you were great as a board to say, hey, let's put some of that into our capital fund. On the second page, you'll see the current capital fund expenditures in there. Um, it doesn't have the roof cost under the capital fund because that the first bill we received was here in July for the roof. And you'll see that in the board orders. You won't see it in the July board orders, but you'll see it in the August. It's a bill for construction. And that's par partial for the roof. Um, and the kitchen's in a pretty good place. Better than last year. Good. So we're up. Uh, and we might be able to look at a decrease in fund balance transfer for this next budget year as well. Is there any? And we have a new kitchen person? We, we do. Yeah. I guess I have a question both space. about kitchen person and new office person. As far as I thought that we approve hirings and I haven't seen anything about that. So you approve, you should have been notified that those were happening. I'm sorry, Corinne. You approve all licensed position hirings. So if it's an endorsed license and the superintendent hires all other positions, according right. state statute. But I should be telling you that you have them. So I, I need to apologize for that. But If you're hiring non-licensed personnel are in the building, are you working with the person. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't even, uh, Peter, the way it works, as I usually say, Aaron, Aaron wasn't here for this, but if Carol was sitting here, like, Carol, go find us, find us someone for that yeah. position. I expect you to have a committee. I expect you to check references. When it comes across my desk, you see a non form like you saw here. Yeah. If I don't see a, a, a bunch of names on the bottom, I'm like, so who was helping you do that? Mm -hmm. And that's happened, and there's been sometimes I said, listen, I only had two, one other person at a time. So I'm like, well, let's have another interview just to make sure we're in a good place. Right. Mm -hmm. So we try to stay with the same procedures. When it, it, I was quoting more statute that the superintendent has the authority, but I delegate that authority around to it. Because I, I, a superintendent should never try to run a building from a superintendent's chair. It doesn't work well. I'm not in the building. Well, I understand that, and I understand the statutes, and that's... that's so I just want you to hear that out of my mouth, that, that that's that, what that, I believe. That's great, because uh, that's important, and I think... Uh, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. But I also, when it when things have gotten tough with a personnel, I'll say the 
principal. Okay, we gotta yeah. we gotta fix this. We better sign off on it. Yeah. Bill, is the utility savings due to the, you know, lighting efficiency or lighting, heating? We mm -hmm. really did a big um, update on the whole heating system here. Right. Okay. Yeah. And two years ago, we replaced all the boil all the oil boilers. Yeah. We weren't able to do the wood chip plant, so we're really seeing a savings in efficiency. That's good. Um, just a simple one was the unit ventilators. Yep. Either had to be open. They couldn't, the d damper valves couldn't work properly mm -hmm. during the winter. So we would just be, air would just be oozing in and out. Mm -hmm. Huge, huge savings. Yep. And so to go back to who's the new chef? I would have, I don't know, I don't have a name off the top of my head. <laughs> but there's somebody there is someone there. There's someone there. Yeah. So trust me in this piece. There is someone there. I couldn't remember the name, and I want to say it's. I'm gonna have the name wrong for the office person. That one, I think I know who it is. But if I say it wrong here and I'm in a public meeting, I don't want to do that. So Maybe we, you could send us something. So we'll send you an email. So then all five yeah. of us will yeah. have that yeah, information anyway. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a good point. Please do that. Um, I can speak briefly to the executive. Oh, I'm sorry. Does anybody have any other questions on the finance report? No. All right. Nope. Then I can speak briefly to the executive committee. Um, we've been working on uh, the retreat, which I think went off really well. Uh, talking about the board goals, uh, policy governance being one of them, and I think we'll be talking about community engagement in our next executive committee meeting. Um, and a lot of discussion about Act 46, of course. And we're set to meet this Wednesday, yep. I think. Corinne, anything you want to report from the policy committee? I wasn't at the only meeting that's been had since we last met. I believe it was in May at some point. And the next meeting is the 27th, which is a week early because of um, Labor Day weekend. Okay. It was scheduled for there. Um, I must say, I was very excited when I got the email that we were going to be getting new yeah. binders, and here it is, but I don't have time to look at it at the moment. So um, <laughs> I just want you go ahead, finish. Go ahead. And so the, the only thing that I wanted to ask our board and or you, Bill, as far as um, policies is that I was looking back through some of which I have, which, as far as I know, are all current. But I gotta, I gotta resolve this quickly, so I don't have more than one book to look at. Um, but my question is, some of the board policies, at least what I was accessing online, and I don't know if it will look any different. What's in here? Some of them had procedures with them, and some of them didn't. And so there were a few of them that definitely spoke to the fact that there needed to be a procedure with it, um, such as the volunteer one where it says there should be a list of positions and identify the level, or something like um, parental involvement where it says each building principal shall develop a school level parental involvement compact, and it gave two sample ones attached and a few others like that where they're mentioning procedures and I'm just wondering as far as if those procedures can be available to us even if it's not appropriate to have it on the website. So the answer to that is yes. That's required under A1 that any time that a board member asks for procedures they should be given. So that, that answer is yes. The, there's a prior question that I wish you would have asked first which is, do you have all those cataloged and know where they all are? What, and, procedures? Yeah. Oh. And the answer is no. Because oh. I want to tell you what it took to get with the binder you have in front of you. We hired someone temporarily for the summer to do that work <laughs> and to go through and go back and see which is the correct one was and to organize all this. So you have a binder not only of the your the Berlin policies, but the Washington Central policy, because sometimes the Washington Central policy has been created for that pol that policy area. So instead of having one at separate buildings, we had one that went across. So to do all, of, we need to your my the reason I'm saying no is because I don't know. I haven't gone through each policy and literally said tab the ones that all say a procedure needs to be created and what it is, and then catalog if we have it. That hasn't been done yet. 
different. Well, and my, my question more was really the ones that I was looking at are the ones that got mentioned at that first policy meeting I went to where Krista had just recently sent out some policies that had been finalized like within the last six to yeah. 12 months. And so I was looking at those and putting them in my binder. And so those were all updated versions of policies. And so where some of those said about procedures, I wasn't sure whether procedures were getting carried forward that already existed or if there would be new procedures. So the answer you know? is, that's why I'm saying it needs to be cataloged because okay. I just, sitting here, Corinne, I don't know. Okay. And so the question, we'll work on it, we'll work on it and, and the question I'll be asking the executive committee, the full board and you know the supervisory union board and the individual boards is, it's just like with the discussion we had about the web, the, the website. We can do whatever we want, but we've got to talk about resources and allocation to get it done. And I was able to take some substitute money that we saved from last year to hire a U32 graduate this summer to do this work. Nice. So, you know, I, I mean, you guys all have heard my prior, so I don't need to go back to those. Yep. But that's if, if we have something that I didn't anticipate and we have the resources, I'm going to throw it at the problem. It's when I've got, when we've got limitations on the resources, then I need help on yeah. what are the priorities. For clarification, are we saying that the procedures, when they are established, will be with the policy? No, what we're trying to do is have them be separate. This is the problem, they were so mixed in with the policies. Mm -hmm. What I need to do is go through and say, let's just pick the one Corinne said. She said, oh, yeah, there's supposed to be a policy on parent, on volunteer, mm -hmm. practice, procedures on how you establish volunteers in your buildings. I can go in the Berlin Handbook and there's a procedure right there. I just don't, sitting here today, Peter, I don't know, mm -hmm. and I haven't sat or tasked someone with, can you please do the follow-up that, where it says whatever policy that was, let's just call it F2 for a letter, mm -hmm. that, hey, F2, here's the policy, it says we're gonna have procedures, they exist in the parent, student parent handbook, and that, or they exist in the staff handbook. And I don't know, I. I would hazard a guess that we're probably 75 to 80 percent compliant with the procedures being there, but I haven't done that catalog to know, to give you that yes or no, or maybe, or we have 75 percent done. So, if assuming we reach 100 percent uh, procedures for yeah. all our existing policies, where will the procedures be? A lot of them will be in student parent handbooks or staff handbooks. That's where most of them go because they're a way of communicating to the parent. Mm -hmm. You'd like to volunteer at the school. This is how you do it. You need to call Lori. She needs to do a background check on you. You can come in and do it. Please sign up. You know, it's not a hard thing to do. I just don't want to recreate or, or do it again, do it with like, hey, I thought of a new procedure for doing it. And I know every time that I've done that without the communication with the buildings, usually I, I, don't, I miss something. Like, hey, did you think of it this way? Because this is how we do it. So I want to do that thoughtful listing of the list out all the policies and there'll yeah. be some way to correlate oh yeah procedures yeah and, and yeah okay. yeah usually in most of the handbooks they reference on policy for like um uh for volunteers is another good one you know this is how you volunteer at the school mm -hmm. all right well thank you for this that policy manual is obviously a lot of hard work yeah, and great yeah. Math. that's great um, I guess I do have one more question as far as, so this got compiled f from a high school graduate being given one and, and then check, making like, copies check, or whatever. And then checked Krista and all that. But yeah. so, and I see, and I did flip over as you were talking and there's an updated table of contents. My question is, has, I didn't think to look in the last few days, has the website, also been updated to have these there? It's in process. I couldn't tell you that Berlin, I don't know if Berlin's been done today, but I know I know Steve was working on it to, to take everything he did from here and then put it on the website. Cool. And, and, and you'll also see there's an updated board page that's just been done that if you go to board minutes or board meetings, you'll see agenda, you'll see a table. We did it like we did for Romney last year. It's been really successful. Um, we use them as a test case where it has a column for like here's you know date august 13th agenda packet minutes orca video 
Nice. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Beautiful. Nice. So we, sometimes it takes a little while, but we do listen. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, agenda items 4.5, 4.6, and 4.7. School Quality Committee, School Start Time Committee, and Negotiations. Our representatives for those, I don't believe, are here. But is they, there Nothing's really to? happened. Uh, there's some talk of... Um, they're all in process of trying to figure out when they're meeting. I think school quality is meeting um, somewhere in the end of August here. I just know that Vera is always really excited about it whenever she talks about school quality. Yeah. <laughs> she thinks they're doing great work. So yeah, it's on school start time. Oh, you were. Yeah, I yeah, stopped at the superintendent's office to make sure I was on the list for whenever, oh, they, whenever they have a meeting. Great. All right, with that, I think we'll move to the action agenda. We did approve uh, board goals already. Um, I would entertain a motion on 5.2 and 5.3 to approve the WCSU testimony for the State Board of Education meeting and appoint uh, Scott Thompson, Laura Diaz-Smith, and Matt DeGroat uh, to present the testimony at the SP. So moved. And second, have you read it? Great. Any further discussion? Those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you. And so then there's the possibility of another meeting regarding Act 46. Did I see that somewhere? I don't remember. There's a nasty rumor that I've been trying to spread to hold <laughs> August 29th. I think the executive committee is going to be talking Wednesday night okay. and saying, where do we want to go? And that was, that was somewhat tacitly said at the June carousel meeting that we had. You might want to hold that last Wednesday it's in August. Important to put it on there. So I because I think there's going to be some key questions about, I have some questions for the executive committee I want to talk with them about, about direction, because it, we're not that far away from budget season, and I need, yeah. Some, yeah. I need some questions answered. Okay, quickly. The board orders, I have a question. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering. In this first packet, I don't know if I can just flip to it, not really. There's something for Sunray Associates fire alarm yep. for year um, 19, $590. But my question is actually, I also see in the second packet of them that we had, Fire alarm for the library, 533, and I was just wondering, are those not the same systems, or how does that work? I signed off on it, but I didn't really understand that. I would assume it's two different checks to Sunray. I don't know why they're the exact same amount. They're, they're not the exact same amount. Okay, One is 590, and the other is 533. So they, they come in and work on our system, both security and fire alarm for the whole building, and there's required maintenance that we do. Not, I mean, not required, but there's just maintenance that has to be done. I'd have to go pull exactly why that was there. That's my only question out of it all. And we'll get those emailed to you that we've been doing. Great. We have a new accounts payable, Carla, and she's excellent, but she's still getting all that. It takes a while. Intricacies down. So still under 6.0 approved board orders. I would entertain a motion to approve two separate board orders. One. Uh, from July in the amount of one million four hundred and eighty seven thousand twenty eight dollars and fifty five cents. Is there a motion to approve that order? So moved. And a second. Seconded. Any discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 And a second order dated August. Uh, with a total amount of eight hundred forty-seven thousand dollars six hundred. Oh, sorry. Let me start that again. Eight hundred forty-seven thousand six hundred twenty-nine dollars and forty-four cents. Is there a motion? Yep. So second. Moved. Second. And uh, any discussion? And those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All right. The board orders are approved. For future agenda items, I have um, one kind of broad category of goals, which includes Berlin specific goals, the board community engagement goal, including the website, uh, and our 
raffles for the website and communication through that. Also including the board handbook and the value statement that's in it. So any suggestions you have in modifying that. Um, and the other future agenda item I had was perhaps a future discussion uh, about the board retreat and um, Bill is going to send around the PowerPoints uh, and documents from that retreat. Those are the only two things that I had for future agenda items. Does anyone have Could you see them again? Because I missed something. All right. So I had board goals, yeah. including okay. Berlin specific yeah. goals, uh, community engagement and communications goal, including a discussion about the website and including a discussion about okay. the board handbook and value statements that are contained in there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then this is kind of maybe nebulous and not formed yet, but um, some future discussion of uh, the follow-up to the board retreat that we had uh, around supporting students. Um, and Bill was going to send around the PowerPoint and other documents that uh, Vera and I had access to at the retreat for the rest of you to take a look at and consider and maybe discuss any next steps that we want to take after that. I don't know that there will be any next steps to take, but this is informing a kind of a greater discussion. Well, I think it's, it's starting to form the budget discussions and some of the supports and Aaron's going to yep. learn about the school and be able to say, hey, I might need some you know, it's maybe either readjusting and support yeah. and, and supporting him doing that or saying, hey, we might need something different here than what we've had, what we're used to. Yep. Any other agenda items? Well, I heard the website, the website personnel piece, which we're going to come back. I had that checked off on my sheet here. That's what I mean. That's what we. I, I had wrapped that into board goals. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Communication, but that's fine. I just wanted to make sure we had that. That's kind of a big one. This, yeah. The, the what I listed as okay. uh, Berlin goals uh, could could really take us a good chunk of time. I think. Okay. Um, I'm thinking that this needs to wait until our next meeting, which will be after school starts, as far as getting an update on class sizes and groupings, how that works out with. Numbers which we all know could still be changing. Yeah. Um, the only other thing, I don't know whether it's getting together with you at some point or having it talked about at a meeting, but we had discussed at a meeting regarding my being able to post some photos and how we can make that happen. And now that the school year is about to start again, it would be good to figure that out. Could you possibly talk about that offline and see if that needs to be at our next meeting? Yeah, let me think about that. Okay. I'm doing some work with some colleagues on what the limitations are for staff tomorrow. I need to do that work first. Okay. Peter, anything you'd like to add? Nothing that occurs to me at the moment. Aaron, Bill, anything you want to see on, a, on our next agenda? Anything we can do to support you for that first day of school? <laughs> day, week, month. Just make sure your kids are here on time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> do that much. Yeah. I saw the thing in the thing, sorry. I saw the email regarding the playground night coming up. What yes. was that, August yep. uh, 23rd? Maybe? I think it's uh, August yep. 23rd. The 23rd, yep, 6.30. Hoping for so we Mother want, Nature's cooperation to really well, have a bee playground. That's true, too. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we invite uh, everybody to come. Um, children with their kids, obviously. <laughs> and uh, But it's a chance to, you know, reconnect, um, meet me, um, and have some watermelon. <laughs> PTNA's going to put it on. And, uh, yeah, so I hope to see everybody there. So it is the 23rd. Hey. So, and I guess one other question, is there a date set yet for open house? Not yet. I think last year it was really late because but, of the construction right, stuff we, not Right, we wanted done. to be able to do the ribbon cutting at the same time. So I think they'll get yeah. back to where they were, which I want to say is somewhere third week of September-ish. Yeah. Right. yeah. Good. Okay. So when is the first day of school? The 27th. No, yeah, 27th. 
we our first day is well the new teachers are here tomorrow or on Wednesday. Oh wow. Really? We're going. All right. A lot of them. Yeah. <laughs> Summer's over. All right. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> oh no. Okay. There's nothing further. I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. So move, look at that. It's after seven.